I fundraise for a nonprofit, but I'm an expert in a nightmare on Elm Street. I work in the airline industry, but I'm an expert at arrested development. I'm a computer programmer, but I'm an expert at that. Welcome to the experts. Our game is played in four rounds, and in round one, our experts will answer 10 questions apiece. And we're going to start with Dave, our nightmare on Elm Street expert. Dave, question one. What writer-director created the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise? Wes Craven. That's correct. What production company, nicknamed the house that Freddy built, distributed all the films? New Line Cinema. That's right. What colors are the stripes on Freddy Krueger's sweater? Red and green. That is right. Your fourth question. What future Oscar nominee's first film was a Nightmare on Elm Street? Johnny Depp. Correct. Four for four. Question five. One, two. Freddy's coming for you. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, what? Grab your crucifix. That is correct. Five for five. What actress played Nancy Thompson, the original young girl in danger in the Freddy films? Heather Langenkamp. That is right. What Freddy Krueger film had the highest domestic gross? Uh, Freddy vs. Jason. That's right. In what installment did Robert Englund improv improvise the line, welcome to primetime, bitch? The Dream Warriors. That's right. Question nine, what is the name of the diner where Alice works in part four, The Dream Master? The Crave Inn. That is right. And finally, for a sweep, what 70s pop hit inspired Wes Craven to create Freddy Krueger? Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver, 10 for 10. Man, that's good. We move now to Amber. Amber, your category is the television show Arrested Development. Here's your first question. Though never officially credited, who narrates Arrested Development? Ron Howard. What actress plays the unnamed Bride of Job in seasons one and two? Amy Poehler. That's right. What Orange County city is a show set? Uh, Newport Beach. That's right. On what 70s sitcom did the actors who play lawyers Barry Zuckerhorn, Barry Zuckercorn, and Bob Loblaw appear together? Happy days. Monday, Tuesday. Four for four. What phrase is used to describe Tobias Funke because of his gymnophobia? Never nude. Never nude. What job, a word printed on his cap, does Larry Middleman hold? Uh, surrogate. That is right. You had to fish for that one. You got it. What 80s song is played during most of Job's magic performances? Uh... Final countdown. Yeah, can you just sing it quickly? Do -do -do -do. Thank you. Eight. What is the name of the fictional character created by Job, the animation rights to which he regrets giving to Michael after seeing the character in a TV commercial? Mr. Banana Grabber. Mr. Banana Grabber. In what fictional Orange County district does Michael meet his girlfriend Rita, played by Charlize Theron? We Britain. And for the tie. What actor from the show got his start in the 1999 TV series I Was a Sixth Grade Alien? Uh, Jason Bateman? I'm sorry. You're <laughs> hanging on, Dave. Michael Sarah. That, that is the answer. And we move now to bats. Warren, the competition is stiff. You seem confident. I will ask you the first question. To what phylum do bats belong? Uh, chordata. That's correct. What system do bats use to locate prey in the dark? Echolocation. Right. During the Civil War, what bat byproduct was used to make gunpowder? Guano. What is the term worn for a baby bat? A pup. That's right, four for four. What disease discovered in a New York cave in 2006 uh, has killed more than five million Warren? Let me finish, bats. Geomyces uh, destructans, also known as white nose syndrome. Uh, we're gonna take white nose disease, that's right. What is the average number of bats in a bat litter? Uh, one. Correct, what is a group of bats called and what is where they live called? Um, a group is called a roost and they live in a cluster. I, I know. A uh, yeah. uh, group is a colony, a colony and they live in a roost. Three. How many fingers are on a bat's wing? Uh, five. Correct. What name is given to the study of bats? Uh, uh, Cropdology. That is right. And the tenth question to get you into a tie with Amber, the near extinct Rodriguez fruit bat can currently be seen in U.S. zoos in San Diego, Philadelphia, Chicago, and what fourth city also famous for its bats? Uh, Austin, Texas. Texas. Louisville. Louisville, Louisville. Slugger Louisville. bat. That's sort of a trick question, but Warren, you did well. In round two, our experts have seven questions to choose from, ranging in difficulty from $1 to $7. But those $7 questions are really hard. Each expert will answer two questions, but here they have a choice whether to answer or push. And if they push and their opponent gets it right,
their opponent gets the money. Our experts don't lose any money in round two, but if they're smart, they can keep their opponents from making much money. So Warren, with eight, this is the highest, lowest score in the history of the experts. Eight, you go first. You got your one point question. That's gonna be your easiest question. You can pass it. Hold on to that, Warren. Don't give that away. It's worth more than any money you're gonna win in this game. But it looks like you're passing your one point to Dave. Dave, here is your $1 question uh, in the category of Nightmare on Elm Street. What actress played Kristen Parker in part four, The Dream Master? Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Awesome. Very well done. You get one. We go now to you, Dave. Let's see which number you come up with. You're three. Three. All right. An average question. You want to play it? Give it to Amber or Warren? Um, I will give it to Warren. You give it to Warren. This is a number three bat question, Warren. Where specifically can the world's largest number of Mexican free-tailed bats be found? Uh, Bracken Cave off in uh, Texas. That is good for three. Bracken Cave in Texas is where you can look at Mexican free-tailed bats. Amber, let's see you swipe. Big money, no whammy. And you get a two, another easy question. You want to pass it to one of your opponents? I'm going to send it to Dave. Dave, Sorry. you get your one and your two. Not a good way to get offense. These players know what they're doing. They saw you get ten right the first time. Obviously, give them this one and a two. What 2010 documentary chronicled the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise? Never Sleep Again. Never Sleep Again is right. So Dave cannot answer any more questions. Warren, take a swipe. Five. Now we're getting into the good ones. Warren, do you want to answer that five question or do you want to pass it to Amber? He makes a bat move. I'll pass it. I'll pass it. Amber, this is your number five question, Arrested Development. When the Bluth family appears on the show Mock Trial with Judge Reinhold, what is the name of the house band on the show? William Hung Jury. The William, William Hung Jury. William, William Hung, Hung and, and his jury. Hung Jury. We're going to give it to you. That's for yes. five. Come on. You knew what you had to know there. Amber, time to swipe a four. And Amber, you can answer your four or only pass it to Warren. I will answer this one. Answer this. Okay. What phrase is printed on the shirt of Job's puppet Franklin Delano Bluth? A reference to a 2005 Kanye West quote. White people? <laughs> White people is not a phrase, Amber. Uh, George Bush doesn't care about black puppets. So you don't Something get racist. that one. And now uh, we, we have one more question this round, and Dave swipes, and he can give it to uh, Warren. Ah, that's just what you wanted. Warren, you get your seven-point question here. This is going to be the toughest bat question of the round. What is the largest bat normally found in Canada? The big brown bat. I'm sorry, it's the hoary bat. The hoary bat is the largest Canadian bat. Uh, and we will be back with round three. <laughs> in round three, our experts will answer two questions, this time for $5 a piece. And while they're thinking, the other experts are going to bet on whether or not they know the answer. And if they guess right, they'll make just as much money as the expert who's answering. And we're going to start with Warren. What blood thinning drug developed from vampire bat saliva is used to prevent strokes and heart disease? Think about that. Your opponents are going to think about whether or not you know the answer to this question. What blood thinning drug developed from vampire bat saliva is used to prevent strokes and heart disease? Uh, so, Warren, answer the question. Court of something. Court, court of something. something. We're not going to give you something for court of something. Uh, it's Draculin is the name of the drug. Okay. Draculin. Uh, Amber thought you'd get it right. And, of course, Dave thought you'd get it right. So no harm, no foul. We move on to you, Dave. Here's your first question. In part two, Freddy's Revenge, what reason does Rod, Ron Grady give for being grounded? In part two, Freddy's Revenge, what reason does Ron Grady give for being grounded? Warren very secretively, secretively deciding whether or not he knows it. And Dave, do you know it? I do. 
he threw his grandmother down a flight of stairs. That is correct. Let's see if we get a couple of rights here. Everybody gets some money there. Look at that. Okay, Amber, we're going to go to you. Your first one. When the show was canceled in 2006, what premium cable channel was interested in picking it up? We're talking about Arrested Development, Warren. What premium cable channel? Dave seems like he's got a gut feeling. And tell me, Amber, what cable channel was it? That would be Showtime. That would be correct. Yes. And we're right, right, and right all oh, across guys. the board. There's been no difference here. We move now to you, Warren. Back to another bat question. What are the three species of vampire bat? This is a three-part answer. Three species of vampire bat. We're deep into bats now. Dave mulling over whether to think you're going to get it right or wrong. Are you committed yet, Dave? I am. Warren, let's hear. Uh, I have no clue. Really? I actually was going to look that up, but I did not. Okay. <laughs> you should have. Yeah. Uh, common vampire bat, hairy-legged vampire yeah. bat, and, of course, the white-winged vampire bat. Of course, the white-winged vampire bat. Amber, thought you'd get it right, and so did Dave. Man, across the board, <laughs> we're doing okay. <laughs> Dave, let's go to your second question. What song did Bruce Dickinson of the band Iron Maiden write for Part 5, The Dream Child? Part 5, The Dream Child. Look at Amber looking at you, seeing if you know it. Poker face, poker face. Warren couldn't care less what you're doing with your face. <laughs> he comes in, and now Most we're ready don't. for the answer. Right. The, that, the that, Iron Maiden song. It's actually won the Razzie for worst original song that year. It was Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. <laughs> that is correct. Look at that. Oh, Warren thought you'd get it wrong. Somebody had to break the mold, and it was Warren this time. We have Amber's last question of the round. In season two, the episode The Immaculate Election, what Bluth employee is fired after being caught in bed with Buster? And what was her replacement caught in bed with Buster later in the show? Um, Lupe was fired, the housekeeper, and she was replaced with a Roomba. With a Roomba. Exactly right. Right and wrong, Warren. <laughs> really taking it hard in the last two questions. At the end of the round, $34 for Amber, our leader, $33 Dave in second place. Warren, so in this game with 21 as we head into round four, our expert of experts round. <laughs> round four determines our winner, our expert of experts. And it's anybody's game because they can wager any or all of their money. Warren, we will start with you. You've been given two categories, Honduran white bats and bat colonies. You've had time to think about it. And in bat colonies, you have bet $1. Ooh. Here is your question for $1. Under what Austin, Texas bridge can one and a half million bats be found? The Ann Richards Bridge or the Congress Avenue Bridge. That is correct. Warren, you want a dollar. Next, we go to you, Amber. Your categories were season four of Arrested Development and opening credits. You've decided to bet $4, four of your $34 on season four. And here's the question. In the soon to be released season four, what actor from Mad Men will have a recurring role? John Hamm. John is right, but we don't give half credit. John Slattery oh. is the answer to that question. So Dave, we come to you now, and your two categories that you could choose from were Freddie's mother and cameos. You've decided to wager $16 in cameos. Here is your question. In part four, The Dream Master, who plays the small role of the teacher giving a lecture on dreams, and what was his job in real life? Robert Shea, he was the head of New Line Cinema and he produced all the Nightmare on Elm Street films. That is $16 in your wallet. There you go, Dave. So for our second question in round four, Warren, we come to you. Your category, Honduran white bats, and you decided to wager 20 of your original 21. The confidence in Honduran white bats is amazing. Um, and, can, I, uh, can I explain my reasoning? Uh, please do. If you were offered a base, two baseball categories and one was National League, and the other one was Johnny Vandermeer. What would you go with? I guess I would go with Johnny Vandermeer. Right? I am taking okay. a Johnny Vandermeer gamble on this there one. There you go. What color, Warren, are the nose and wings of the Honduran white bat? Pink. 
yellow is the answer. Ooh. Did not see that. Johnny was Vandermeer. That was no, I thought he was going to ask where they nest. Where, where do they nest? nest? <laughs> no, they, they nest under palm leaves. That's what I figured yeah. it was going to be. Uh, we come now to you, Amber. The question is opening credits. You wagered thirty dollars. Do you know what thirty dollars means in the experts? <laughs> you know how much money that is in the that's getting six round two questions right. Yeah. Anyway, and you can only answer two. Uh, here is the question in opening credits. How many people are in the Bluth family photograph at the beginning of the intro sequence? So I'm gonna say like what what are the, what are the opening credits? Um so the Bluth family photograph. What do you think, Amber? This is a random number that I have no basis upon. Oh my god. Give it to us. Six. Nine. Nine. I'm sorry, wow. Amber. We come now to you, Dave. Wow. Your question for 17 now. And of course, Dave, you could get it Doesn't wrong matter. and win the game. Uh, it's a lot of money in your wallet here. $17 on this question. The category Freddie's mother. What was Freddie's mother's name when she was a nun? Sister Mary Helena. That is right. For sixty-six dollars, you won sixty-six to two to zero. Dave, you are our expert of experts. You're going to come back for the hardest question in the world. You'll start, Dave, by choosing the percentage of your total you're going to be playing for. If you get the question wrong, you'll lose that much of your money. If you get it right, you'll add that much. Pick an envelope. I'll go for this one. Let's see it. We'll reveal what you chose later. For now, here's the hardest question in the world. It's gettable, but only by the most knowledgeable expert. The question is, name the four actors playing four of the seven main teenagers in the film who got their first big screen credit for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Again, name the four actors playing four of the seven main teenagers in the film who got their first big screen credit for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. That is tough. Um, it's not just tough, it's the hardest question <laughs> in the world. I'm going to say four of them. Uh, Jennifer Rubin. Uh, Rodney Eastman. Ken Sagos. Dave, I'm going to need an answer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Ira Hayden. Dave, you got three out of the four, uh, I'm afraid. You missed Patricia Arquette and Kevin Sagos wasn't in there. I'm really Sagos. sorry. Uh, that was really good. Let's see what you played for. Hopefully it's a small percentage. Oh, oh 80%. No. <laughs> 80% brings your final total, Dave, to $13.20 <laughs> for knowing everything about Nightmare on Elm Street. You still oh, are no. our expert of experts. <laughs> All right. Oh,